Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about solvents. What is the classification of solvents and how we can classify the solvents in different types. Now, what is called solvent? Solvent is a substance which is added to dissolve other substances. Like I can give you one simple example, like when we make salt solution, like sodium chloride means that salt is solute and the water is solvent, then we get a solution. So this is the simple phenomenon we experience in our daily life. So usually solvent is liquid and in chemistry lab also, whenever we perform any chemical reactions, we need solvent. So solvent is an important thing for chemical reactions. But we have to be particular that particular which reaction we need which type of solvents. Now solvents can be classified into two types polar solvent and the non-polar solvent. Polar solvent again classified into two types polar protic solvent and polar aprotic solvent. Now how I can find out that which solvent is polar and which solvent is non-polar. There are actually two factors. One is dielectric constant and second one is the dipole moment. These are the two factors decide that which solvent is polar and which solvent is non-polar. So usually non-polar solvent dipole moment is zero or it's very less. And for polar solvent, it has a dipole moment. It has a significant value of dipole moment. Even dielectric constant is a value which measures the polarity of the solvent molecules. Now just think if the molecule is a polar, so it has a dielectric constant value. And if the molecule is non-polar, then the dielectric constant value will be very less. So here you can see from here we have given two examples, water and methanol. So water dielectric constant is 80 and methanol dielectric constant is 30. So as I already mentioned, that dielectric constant measures the polarity of the solvent molecules. Now water molecule, water has higher dielectric constant than methanol. So that means water is more polar than methanol. Here, a few examples has been given. There are few solvents we have taken, formic acid, dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, ethanol, acetone, and dichloromethane. And dielectric constant value also you can see that formic acid dielectric constant value is 18. And dichloromethane, the dielectric constant value is 9. So that means dichloromethane is non-polar and formic acid is strongly polar. Now non-polar solvents contain bonds between atoms with similar electronegativities like it should be carbon-carbon bond, carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now you can see all the time we cannot find out the dielectric constant we are we cannot measure the dielectric constant. So how from the molecule, molecular structure we can predict that this will be a polar or non-polar molecules. So usually for non-polar molecules the electronegativity difference between the two atoms should be negligible. So like here, if you take a hydrocarbon, these are all carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. So electronegativity difference is almost zero. So in this case, that it is a non-polar molecule. So dipole moment is zero and dielectric constant value will be very, very less. Like similarly, if I take benzene and toluene, so these are aromatic hydrocarbon. So this, this is pentane, hexane, these are aliphatic hydrocarbon and benzene, toluene, these are aromatic hydrocarbon. And here you can see all are carbon-carbon bond and carbon-hydrogen bonds. So there is electronegativity difference are almost zero. So these are non-polar solvents. So as already I have mentioned, non-polar solvents have low dielectric constant. So dielectric constant below 15 is usually considered as non-polar solvent. And non-polar solvents are not a good solvent for charged species. Like if we want to dissolve a charged species, like suppose sodium chloride, sodium chloride cannot be dissolved in pentane, benzene or toluene. You can do a simple experiment at home. You have a oil, any 
oil cooking oil you can take and you can take water and if you add sodium chloride you can see the sodium chloride is dissolved in water but sodium chloride is not dissolved in cooking oil because cooking oil is a hydrocarbon chain has a hydrocarbon chain so it's a non polar so that and sodium chloride you know it's a ionic compound it's a charged species so charged species is not going to dissolve in a non polar solvent rather than it is going to be dissolved in a polar solvent which is what water so here few examples of non polar solvent has been given here you can see pentane hexane cyclohexane benzene toluene chloroform so here also you can see the dipole moment value and their dielectric constant value has been given here you can see that dipole moment is these are all cyclohex uh, pentane hexane cyclohexane benzene these are dipole moment value is zero their dielectric constant value is very less so now you can understand that non polar solvent means their dipole moment will be either zero or very less at the same time their dielectric constant value will be also very less so now what is polar solvents just by looking at the molecules we can predict that this solvent will behave as a polar solvent now polar solvent contains bonds between the atoms having the different electronegativities like oxygen and hydrogen carbon oxygen nitrogen hydrogen like this so here we have taken few examples like this is water molecule oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen so oxygen pulls the bonding electron towards itself so now oxygen become delta negative this become delta positive so it makes the each bond is polar so that means it's a polar molecule now even here you can see that this is electronegativity difference we can find out here in the carbon and nitrogen nitrogen is more electronegative so nit nitrogen will be slightly delta negative similarly hydrogen is nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen so hydrogen is delta positive this is ethanol ethanol also oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen and carbon so oxygen will be slightly delta negative hydrogen will be slightly delta positive this is phenol similar thing oxygen will be delta negative hydrogen will be delta positive so each bond is polar so this is also one of the factor we have to look into that to decide whether this molecule will be polar or non polar now from this bond polarity we have to check the dipole moment now polar solvent should have a large dipole moments because they contains polar bonds and having dipole moment now let's see we'll take some few example now here we have taken water molecule so as i have already discussed that each bond is polar and bond dipole is towards the oxygen and oxygen has two lone pair so due to lone pair also they have a polarity so ultimately their bond dipole is towards the upward direction so that means mu not equal to 0 it has a dipole moment now if you look into the carbon dioxide molecule carbon dioxide molecule each bond is polar because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon so each bond is polar but their bond dipole is opposite direction they cancel each other though the bond is polar but ultimately the molecule is a non polar the di bond di the dipole moment will be zero because they are cancelling dipole moment is cancelling each other now similarly if we take another example carbon tetrachloride so each bond is polar carbon chlorine bond is polar because chlorine is more electronegative than carbon though each bond is polar but here dipole moment will be zero because now if you see that this one is upward carbon chlorine and here all these three ccl their dipole is downward so that's why upward downward they are cancelling each other then finally dipole moment will be zero so that's why ccl4 is also considered as a non polar solvent now ethanol th sorry this is methanol so here methanol also that bond dipole will be like this carbon to oxygen and here hydrogen to oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and hydrogen so finally it will has a dipole moment so mu not equal to 0 so that's why water molecule and ethanol molecule they are polar molecule because it they have a 
dipole moment value and carbon dioxide CCL4 they are non-polar though the bond has polarity but dipole moment is zero. Now classification of polar solvents. Polar solvent can be classified again into two parts polar protic solvent and polar aprotic solvent. Now what is polar protic solvent? Polar protic solvents should have OH or NH bonds so that they can make a hydrogen bonds. Now if you look into the structure of the water molecules, each water molecules are associated by hydrogen bonding. Similarly here, this is a ethyl amine. Now here you can see each ethyl amine molecules are associated by hydrogen bonding because they have OH and NH bonds. These are quite polar bonds, so they can form hydrogen bonds. So polar protic solvent means they are polar. They have a dipole moment. They have high dielectric constant value, but at the same time, they have OH and NH bonds so that they can form hydrogen bonding. So here a few examples of polar protic solvent has been given like ammonia, tertiary butanol, propanol, ethanol, methanol, water, because these all the molecules have OH. So OH is there means they can form hydrogen bond. So they are considered as polar protic solvent. Now what is polar aprotic solvent? So polar aprotic solvents may have hydrogen, but that is somewhere. It is not with OH or NH. It will be like CH3, carbon hydrogen. So that means since they don't have OH or NH bonds, they cannot form hydrogen bonds. So polar aprotic solvent means they are polar, they have dielectric constant value, they have dipole moment value, but since they don't have OH or NH bonds, so they cannot form hydrogen bonding. So this is called polar aprotic solvent. So example is acetone. Now here you can see it has hydrogen, but hydrogen is attached with carbon hydrogen. And we know the carbon hydrogen electronegativity difference is almost zero, almost negligible. So similarly acetone, tetrahydrofuran, this is dimethyl sulfoxide. These are all polar aprotic solvent because they cannot form hydrogen bonds. So this is the last but not the least. One thing we have to understand that like dissolves like. So that means polar solvent dissolves polar compounds. Non-polar solvent dissolves non-polar compounds. So the one example I have already given you, like if you add sodium chloride in cooking oil, it is not going to dissolve. But if you add sodium chloride in normal water, it is going to dissolve. Why? Because water is a polar solvent. So polar and sodium chloride is also cations 1 Na plus and Cl minor, the ionic species. So ionic species can dissolve in the polar, polar solvent. So like dissolves like. But since sodium chloride is a polar, but cooking oil, it's a non-polar, so it's not going to dissolve. So that's, that is, this concept is very much important even in the chemistry lab. Like whenever we perform any chemical reactions, we should understand that which kind of solvents we are supposed to use for this particular reaction. So this is just the key points that polar solvents and non-polar solvents. Uh, polar solvents, dipole moment is high. Non-polar solvents is low or zero, dielectric constant value. Polar solvents high, non-polar solvents low. Solvation dissolve polar compound by polar solvents. Non-polar solvent can dissolve only the non-polar uh, non-polar compounds. Electronegativity difference in the polar solvent definitely high. Non-polar solvents low. Examples already we know. Polar solvents water, ethanol, acetic acid. Non-polar solvents hexane. A daily like cooking oil. This is one of the example. Cooking oil, kerosene, coconut oil. These are all example of non-polar solvent. So thank you for watching this video and if you like this video, if you think this video is going to be helpful for your study, then subscribe my channel Chemistry Affinity and share it with your friends. And if you have any chemistry related queries, you can send me a mail chemistry.affinity at gmail.com. Thank you.